Hi, it's Friend from Spirits of Fashion. Welcome back to my channel. I plan to do a different type of video today, but of course I've been thrifting and I found some amazing things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again today. I uh, will be switching it up soon though. Um, we're having some work done in our house and so it's kind of a crazy time. So I'm just um, getting away and doing some thrifting and having fun with that. So I'd like to share that with you. So let's get going. So first up is something that I did pick up a couple of months ago. Um, and this sweater I decided to wear today because I just did an event at a library in Rhode Island, Coventry Public Library. And it was all about styling, thrifted, and vintage fashion and accessories. So we talked about, you know, how to find your own authentic, unique style um, and how to mix in vintage or unique pieces with your wardrobe and what you already have in your closet. So I had found this at Nostalgia Antiques and Collectibles, which is the store my husband and I owned for five years and is still there. I visited them, like I said, a couple months ago, and I got this sweater from one of the vendors. I have never seen a 50s beaded sweater with, wait for it, a lace hood on the back that still has the glittery aspects to it that the front of the sweater does. I fell in love with this. I think I, she gave me a deal. I think I got it for $26. And I know I kind of feel like a bride, but boy, I'll tell you, this sweater is in incredible condition. I don't think it was ever really worn. And I love, it's got the little pearl buttons as well. So I just thought I'd show that off, but I've been doing a lot of thrifting since then. Um, so I will give you a little lowdown of that. I went recently to two of my favorite places to thrift and find antiques as well. And that is Queechy. Uh, has a large three-floor antique mall similar to Nostalgia in Rhode Island. It's called Vermont Antique Mall, and I do occasionally find some terrific pieces in there um, that I can really use for my events or that I just add to my own rather large collection. <laughs> Can't stop. Um, I, lots of times, and I always tell people this, when you go into an antique mall, there are vendors sometimes that just sell clothing and accessories but there is occasional, occasionally a booth that does not focus on clothing. And there might be one item in there. And I'm pretty sure it's the same booth that a couple of years ago, I found a very colorful 60s dress. And I will put um, a picture of that up here for you to see. I got it, I'm pretty sure it's the same booth because it was on a mannequin. There was no other clothing in there but this dress. It's a handmade 60s dress. Fantastic. I still wear it for my events. And this time I found a real 1920s lace dress. Now I do do 1920s fairly often or even when I do the fashions of Downton Abbey um, at libraries and senior centers etc. I do t bring my 20s pieces with me and it's very hard to find 1920s items, especially for a good price. But this was on the mannequin by itself. It does have damage. That's why I'm not really playing around with it right now. But it has this beautiful um, handkerchief hem and it does have the lace inserts. Has a little flower that I know has seen better days, but it's still there. And so this is the perfect dress to try to preserve as well as I can. tissue and put it in an acid-free box to try to limit the damage. Um, but I do want to use this for my events because people so appreciate seeing the real thing. Um, just gorgeous. And the fact that it's still hanging around after all this time, you know it was very well made. Next thing at the mall that I found, couldn't believe my eyes, probably in the same row, but it was a different booth. And they were just a couple of things on a shelf. So always look underneath and see what's there because sometimes our eye tends to just stay where you know where we can see directly forward but you need to do a little bit of you know looking up looking down because you never know well if you love fashion you'll know that these dresses are not only a little harder to come by because they made a limited amount 
but they are quite expensive when you find them. This is a Gunny Sacks dress, and those of you who know that label um, will be very jealous to see that I found one. I did pay $40, but that is a really fair price. And the best part of this dress is the provenance. The women's booth that I found it in left a note on the dress and said, yes, I did wear this to my prom in 1982. So Gunny Sacks only produced into the, uh, I think, early 80s. So this was probably towards the end of their whole stint. Uh, and again, they, they did not man manufacture that many. So it is a lot harder to come by. I don't remember if mine was a Gunny Sacks, but when I went to my sophomore hop in the 70s, I wore a Gunny Sacks style dress. It was browns, like all of those early 70s colors but it was very similar in terms of the styling. I wish I still had it, then I'd have the label so I could tell you, but long maxi dress, sort of one of those prairie style dresses that we were all wearing back then. So this was a great find for $40. If you look them up online, you'll see that they do fetch more money than that many times. Um, okay, another thing I found was Oh, this was this is the best. Now I'm going to do a whole thing on purses. I have quite a collection of vintage bags. I can't stop collecting them. Whenever I see one that I don't yet have, whether it's a style or a color or both, I pick it up if it's a good price. And I'm a sucker for patent leather. This is a '50s um, patent leather gray bag, sort of like a dappled gray um, with a chain, still intact, in fantastic condition. Uh, when I opened it up, before I, it was only $5, so I knew I was going to buy it, but I always open because I always say you never know what you're going to find inside. Never. It could be a comb. Many of the bags came with combs, mirrors, sometimes little attached purses. This one, though, had lavender gloves inside, and they came with it because I didn't put them there. So they came with it, and they are attached so I don't know if this means they were never worn, which is most likely. It's a stitch on there. Same color stitching. So I suspect that these had never been worn, but they were put in the bag either by the original owner or whoever was selling it this time just said, I'll throw these in with it. There's no extra price on it, separate price. So that was such a cool bonus. And I only paid... Seven dollars. No, I'm sorry. Five dollars for this lovely bag with a bonus gift in it. So that was that was a real thrill for me. Um, I also found this cute little bag that was made in Hong Kong. Has the tag on the inside. Very tough for me to resist vintage beaded bags because um, if they're in good condition like this, they are uh, a steal for the price. I paid 15 for this, but well worth it. It's an incredible condition. I love the big sort of filigree gold balls as a clasp and the chain is intact. And the inside is a lovely satin, white cream colored satin. And again, the tag says made in Hong Kong. So I just had to pick that up. I thought that was a very reasonable price. I love the pastel flowers for spring. And as I always say in my events when I'm doing the styling uh, topics, I'll always say, let's say you want to start switching up your style and you don't want to start too big. You're afraid to kind of go all out and change everything. You don't have to change everything all at once. But it's sort of safe to pick up a bag like this for $15 that's incredible shape and a great vintage condition maybe never even used, and add that to your regular wardrobe for an evening out. People will ask about it, will be a conversation piece, but it's not something that they'll say, well, wow, you've changed your style. This is just an easy, safe way to start making vintage or unique pieces, statement pieces, a part of your new wardrobe. So just a little tip there. So I love that piece. Um, another uh, soft goods textile item was this beautiful, it's still got the tissue paper. This particular vendor takes great care in terms of her textiles, what she sells, and she's really reasonable. I believe I paid $13.50 for this. I love vintage textiles, and this is a card table 
size or cocktail table size tablecloth and it has it's so cool it has like lemons and olives and cherries on it so you know it's all about the drinks and uh, I love this these tend to be very expensive when you buy vintage textiles like that are in great condition like this I don't know if you can see the color it's just a nice light pink and it has you know the green olives the yellow lemons it's just fantastic and when I do the cocktail culture presentation talking about the 50s and 60s this would be the perfect thing to put out um, to put all of my collections on, whether it's barware or jewelry or vintage accessories from the period. So I had to pick that up for $13.50. Just love it. Another piece that these can go for a big box too. Um, the vendor put music box on it, on this. I don't know if you've seen these before, but any of you who have heard some of my other videos or seen these videos know that I also have a presentation on the history of cosmetics, beauty and cosmetics, and I love collecting anything to do with that. So this is actually a music box, but it's also a powder box. So a lady would put this on her vanity and it would just hold the powder and then she would have a puff and then the top would go back on when it's not in use. Now, this is a 20s piece. I can tell the 1920s, this, there was, uh, you know, this was a very popular item to have for ladies' dressing tables. And in the 20s, they were very big on 18th century images. So these might be on a compact or, in, in this case, on a musical powder box for the vanity. And this was $9. So that's a very, very good price for such an old piece. Still plays. And I will spin it in a minute. It's going to make a liar out of me now, isn't it? <gasps> Come on, you just played for me five minutes ago. One more time. Oh, it played Go to Sleep. Ba -da -da. It's a lullaby. It just played. Oh. So it still works after all these years. Well worth the wait. You put the cover back on, I guess it's, it stops it. So absolutely beautiful piece for the price especially. I can't resist these really cute little cow. Anything to do with a cow I always love. But I love the mid-century ones. This is a, a mid-century, um, it's a pitcher, but it's a little cow pitcher. And I love the ones that are sort of kitschy, if you know what I mean. They're just sort of kind of fun to look at. They make you smile. And on the bottom, it just says Japan. So this is definitely an older piece. I have a small collection of these little cows that I'm building up on. I just love this. And this was, I think, only $5. So it was a very good price for this very cute little guy right here. Something that you might not think to look for, but I happened to find this at the same place, was these lingerie guards. If you've seen these before, um, this says La Jeanne Pin-In Lingerie Guard. A pin guard in shoulder seam about one inch from neck. Snap ends around shoulder straps so that your lingerie doesn't slip out of whatever dress you're wearing. It'll stay put. And these were never used. They still have the pins. They were 15 cents when they were first sold. So I had to pick those up. They were $3.50. What a bargain for something really in its, still in its package. I can't resist books. There's a vendor at the Vermont Antiques Mall who not only has almost all fashion and accessories books, as well as things on textiles, cookbooks and she has 25% off a lot of the time. So I have found some incredible books in there. And one of them is this Judith Miller 60s style. I can't resist anything like this. I have some things on the 60s, some books on the 60s, but I don't have this one. So had to buy it. And I got it for $9 with the price reduction. It's cool because it has uh, different chapters, ceramics, glassware, homeware, Furniture, fashion, 
and etc. And it's all 60s. So it's such, for me, I was brought up in the 60s, so it's a real flashback of nostalgia for me. Um, all of the home goods and the fashions and, again, sort of kitschy things that were sold in the 1960s. So that was a great bargain. And the other book I picked up was this. I've never heard of this one. The Golden Flea, A Story of Obsession and Collecting by Michael Ripps. How did I not buy it? How could I not buy that book? That's fantastic. Obsession and Collecting. Sound familiar? Yes, it does. This book only cost me $6.38. And it sounds wonderful. I haven't yet started reading it, but I thought it was something that you might want to uh, write down in terms of a title because uh, this was the first edition and it was it was done in 2020. It, was, it came out in 2020. But I just love um, books like this. They're just very entertaining. So that was, I think, the last piece from that particular mall. I went to one of the place that day, but uh, they were closing. And I know the owner because my husband and I had, when we lived in Queechee, had a booth there where we were selling things. We were only there for a few months because again, picked up and moved again. But um, she uh, she told me I had, I think I had 25 minutes. So I had a I had a book it fast, but I still found a few things. One of them was this beautiful, I love this green opalescent glass candy dish or you know you could put pretty much anything in here and you've got the opalescent edge it's got the roughly edge um i don't see a mark on it but i just thought the design was so gorgeous i just love this color green and i've been doing a lot more glass collecting and learning about it so i had to pick this one up and i'm afraid i have to cheat because i don't remember the price the price was um, six dollars. So it was a really reasonable price and I'll definitely add that to my greens. And as I say when I'm talking about picking up home decor, if you love the colored glass, keep in mind that they're great for making a style, stylish kind of a color scape. So you might want to use green in the spring and summer, especially a light green, but it would also look great during Christmas or that holiday season because of the green, if you like the red and green traditional colors. So you can really switch this out a lot of different seasons and pair it with other things that you have in similar colors. So I love that about that. Three buckles I found um, for $2. This is the one I saw, it was, they were all in the same package, but I love these old plastic buckles. And I tell people, in fact, I demonstrated it the other night at the library, you can actually put narrow scarves through these. And I saw Beth Jones on B. Jones Style, who I follow, I love her. And she put a scarf around her neck with a bigger version of this, which I have too, and just kind of let the scarf drape through. She tied it around the neck and this was sort of the accent on the scarf and it held it together I held it on her neck I love that it's a simple way to wear a scarf to be honest with you I never would have thought of it so Beth was a great inspiration for that so when I see these plastic buckles I pick them up they're old and they're also really cool pieces to make your style more unique obviously speaking of jewelry type items this piece uh, I see a color I don't have like I said earlier I gotta pick it up this is what looks like a very, almost hematite, either that or a very, very deep blue necklace. And this is that sort of 60s style, um, you know, it's just big stones in silver tone or in some cases gold tone. This looks like it was gold tone and sort of getting a little bit more silver with age, but I just love necklaces like this. And it's the same thing as with a bag. What if you're wearing a regular, you know, tank top and jeans or cutoffs or capris and you put this on with it it would be something unexpected it's vintage it's kind of you know, one of a kind now and you can pick something up like this for three dollars like i did so always look for things like this that can give you a statement piece of jewelry but that's better made than some of the statement pieces that were out a few years ago this is still around after all of these years so you know that it was much better made You know how I am about the beauty things. This was a dollar, it was on the dollar table. 
This is, I love these old sachets. I remember these from the 60s um, when I was little. My mother would have them. And this is Avon uh, to a Wild Rose Cream Sachet. I can still smell it even with the cover off. Smells good too. But I love the little decorative milk glass jars. Uh, usually has something floral. In this case, of course, uh, pink flowers on the front. And I always take these with me when I do my history of beauty and cosmetics because it's something vintage. You don't want to use these cosmetics. Who knows what could happen to your skin? It's too old. I wouldn't trust it. But I just love having these around um, to bring with me and to share with other people because I love the old packaging. You know, now everything's plastic. You have to pay big bucks to get anything glass at all. So love that. Uh, and finally, I wanted to just talk a little bit about current style. I really do not get inspiration as much from magazines as I used to because as we all know, it's becoming harder to find magazines at all. If, when you go to the drugstore, you have to go to a big bookstore like a Barnes & Noble, which I do not have near me. But there you can find magazines much more readily. But I do so, still subscribe to Harper's Bazaar. So I just wanted to pull that out for you to show you a couple of ideas that I thought were great. And I shared this with my audience the other night when we talked about styling. I love this simple idea of a, a t-shirt. Now t-shirt, the, the big t-shirts are kind of back again. And I remember in the 80s, we had these sort of like the buckle I just showed you, but bigger and they would usually have some sparkle to them and we'd put an edge of the t-shirt through that and that would, we'd pull it through and it would make the t-shirt gathered and a little tighter, fit tighter. Well, they did this with a brooch. And so why not, right? This is a nice way if you have a boxy t-shirt and you wanna, you don't wanna tuck it in, you can just put a vintage brooch on there like they did here and there you go. I don't think this is vintage. I think this is a very pricey brooch, probably Cartier. But it, you can get these vintage bro brooches for a song. I have quite a collection myself. And I just think that's such a simple idea to put your own spin on a very casual t-shirt. And then the other thing was, again, this is Cartier, is this, I love this style. I've always loved that style. Sometimes it's a bracelet, but a lot of times it's a necklace. Um, these are, gee, they, it's so expensive that they say, call this number because if you have to ask, you can't afford it. So call the number and order it, <laughs> which of course I'm not doing. But years ago in Salem, my favorite place, some of you know, there was a woman who had a great antiques and vintage jewelry store. We used to go see her every year. And this was in a case, but it was a, it's a belt. But I usually wear it like a necklace anyway. Look at that, that's mother of pearl, it's very, you know, pretty heavy considering it's old, um, probably early 20th century, and I just love it. But this for, I don't remember what I paid. It's years ago. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it's certainly not going to be the price of this one. And I just love the similarity in design. So why go and buy and pay all that money when you can get one in a vintage or antique jewelry store? Maybe it's a belt, but you can make it into a necklace. So... That's my haul for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please like and subscribe so that you can see my videos come out when they do. I'm making them once a week now. As I mentioned before, I'll be happy to take suggestions. So leave a comment below if you have any particular areas you'd like me to talk more about. I have a big collection of clothing and accessories I'd like to share with you as well and talk about the history of the pieces. So please feel free to give me suggestions. And I hope to see you again soon in the next video. And as always, remember, style never dies. Bye.